Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Kevin Coyne reporting in about the Venture Outfitter. Um, Want to make sure that uh, we bring you into the fold about what's been happening this week. And I go ahead and bring my slides up. Hopefully, you can see the right screen. Um, we're still working on. We're in the middle of working on our next studio here in um, here in Austin. And make a long story short, uh, we're still working out all the details. So I'm in a quiet place um, in the middle of Austin, right next to the Capitol. But uh, for today, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have a program about cultivating your inner artist. And I'm going to tell you where that came from and why that's important and what, what this has to do with entrepreneurship. It has much more to do with entrepreneurship than I think most people have any idea. And so part of what I want to do today is talk through that. And here at the Venture Outfitter, part of what we're here for is to work with each other on building our businesses worldwide. In fact, we have an initiative that is going to be taking this work to an even larger um, group worldwide. I'm real excited about that. Um, and we'll tell you more about that as it comes and all that sort of stuff. The other thing to make sure is, is uh, we're expanding the footprint of what's happening on the community site. So to really get the value out of the Venture Outfitter, if, you know, even for free, you can actually get much more value than just listening to my voice on, on these programs by going to community.techranch.com, and we'll tell you more there. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, um, today's sponsor is Go Austria. Uh, we're going to have a program that's sponsored by the Austrian government that's going to be happening in October, November of this year. Real excited about this. Um, as you know, Tech Ranch has a commitment to not only the Americas, but also we've been doing activities in Central Europe, Central and Eastern Europe. And I'm real excited about be working to be working with the Austrians. Um, over the last week, we picked a, their um, the the entrepreneurs that are going to be coming here, these are durable companies that are you know growing concerns uh, have uh, technologies that's in sustainability. If you're interested in getting involved, this is definitely a call for the type of mentors that we're going to want to engage with these kind of companies. Um, they're really impressive. I can't tell you about them yet because we, we we do have them picked out, but we haven't announced which ones. But thank you to Go Austria for um, sponsoring today's program. And also thank you for being a part of the, the coming Venture Bridge that we're doing with Austria. So that will come soon. So I've been talking about the Tech Ranch community site. If you haven't gone to it yet, you can go, you can look at this QR code that's on the screen, or you can go to techranch.com slash connect and there is a url there that you can join our community for free now there's there's certain parts of the community site that actually are special for the venture bridges this is where the entrepreneurs go to get their access points and stuff like that but then the other side of it too is there's a lot of free stuff there like as an example some of the entrepreneurs we're working with that are saving lives and doing these amazing technologies don't have the same resources that we have here in the United States. And so part of what we want to do is we want to make sure that that's never a barrier for their success. Uh, because a lot of times I've told you in the past stories of a company out of Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Mexico, that has a technology that could save your life because it'll help you recognize that you're having a heart attack up to eight hours beforehand, right? That technology was a low cost technology. It wasn't built in the healthcare, you know, gold encrusted healthcare uh, system of the United States, you know, it came from uh, this little town in Chihuahua. Make a long story short, um, because of that, I want to make sure that we get more access. And a lot of times the thing that people don't recognize, a lot of people come to me. I mean, I, I get at least, and this is not hyperbole, I mean, at least 25 to 30 people per week, per week that are saying, hey, help me get connected to xyz well if you're serious about that don't make me do the work go go to the community site and do the work yourself <laughs> so sorry to be obnoxious but uh, i want you to take advantage of that um this next week we're going to do a a public event it's also going to be a private event i mean not not public it's going to be uh in person and also um online 
we're going to do it with the Young Leaders of America's uh, program, which is one of the programs that's sponsored by the U.S. State Department to bring young leaders from across Latin America to Austin, actually to other parts of the United States as well, but to Austin. And specifically what's happening is this program is set up so that uh, we've been hosting a couple of fellows that I, I told you about uh, previously. One of the other uh, fellows that's that's here in Austin right now, you've seen before on this program, um, Franz One from, uh, from Haiti. And we've heard some of the work that he's been doing with businesses there, some really cutting edge type of stuff, you know, helping with people that are in, uh, in, in, in difficult situations, but using advanced technology to do so. So part of what we want to do is we're going to do this event where I'm going to share um, a speech and then I'll have, I'm going to facilitate a conversation with this about how we're opening markets through crossing borders. And that will be on June 7th. It's going to be in the evening, uh, Texas time. You can read more about this. If you're interested, go to techranch.com slash events. And then the VO Weekly that we have the next um, the next day, June 8th at 11 o'clock Texas time, it's going to be all about conflict re resolution. Now, Greg Stevens has been a businessman for many, many years, like at least 30 years. Uh, but the thing that he's become worldwide known for is the conflict resolution programs that he brings. I took these uh, programs about 15 years ago from him and uh, make a long story short, to be an entrepreneur that's pushing the envelope, you're up against all sorts of conflicts that you have to work through. And so part of the thing that's going to be happening is come to that, that program. Greg has got great insight one thing that he says and during his 30 minute talk or whatever could actually really help you, whether it's in a personal relationship or perhaps with your business partner or perhaps with one of your vendors or one of your customers. It's surprising how his simple frameworks that are easy to remember can be so powerful. So take advantage of that. And then we, we don't have a slide about this yet, but on June 15th, we will do... Um, uh, I'm actually going to lead a conversation that's being that's going to be about reflecting on 20 years of working with entrepreneurs worldwide. And I'll I'll go into more of the details. Many of you don't know the stories of the last 20 years, and I'm not going to be able to tell all the stories because it's 20 years of stories. But um, part of what we'll do is we'll talk more in depth about that as well. Our partner, Jetro, the Japan Trade Organization, is having a special event in Cambridge and June 8th, that is that next Thursday. So if you're in that area and you wanna see some of the advanced life science that's happening in the area, make sure that you go uh, check this out. They have some really innovative Japanese biotech farms that would be great for you to get to know more about. Um, if you're interested, you can go to either the Tech Ranch events calendar where this is posted, or you can just uh, scan this QR code and you'll be able to uh, find out more. So I am been traveling and um, it looks like uh, I'm actually kind of excited that right now for June, uh, we're really going to focus just on getting a lot of things um, on the ground and put in place because we're in this massive expansion side. So when I found out that my Spain trip is on hold, uh, although I absolutely love Spain and we were working with a Spanish entrepreneur with artificial intelligence out of Madrid yesterday, here in Austin, I'm actually kind of excited that I get to be on the ground for a little bit. And I, I love traveling. I love traveling. But th that trip is going to be on hold. I've mentioned to several of you that I was going to be in, in the Bilbao and then Madrid and Murcia and in and, and Barcelona. Those four cities I will be going to in the future. Um, we're just putting that on hold for right now because of uh, during June, part of what we're doing is we're going through and following the coach that I work with. His name is Ari Messel. He is um, he's he's got me working on all the processes inside of the company, um, following a, a framework that at some point in a few months, or actually in a few weeks not months, uh, we'll have him on. But uh, we're going to do that during June so that we can actually be really well positioned for the expansion that's happening. Santiago and Valparaiso, Chile, I'll be in between August 20, uh, 2nd to the 5th. Uh, I'll be in Mendoza, Argentina. I'll go on the other side of the, uh, drive over to the other side of the hill, uh, or the Andes, that is, uh, August 7th and 8th, and then Inc. Monterey, November 16th and 17th. There will be other things, and I know that there's going to be some other trips that are happening in September, October. We just haven't uh, formalized them yet. We're going to be a little bit conservative about, about announcing them.
So, um, and obviously, if you hear my voice, you should know I absolutely love uh, getting out there. And I have, uh, I bought the 48 page uh, passport because I filled the other one up with visas all over the place. Um, ready to uh, to to go different places. I want to make sure that usually I tell you at the end of the time when we're together that our country manager program, part of what's enabling all this, you know, reaching out is we're, we're not trying to hire a lot of people. We're trying to look for the people who have um, values that are aligned with what TechCrunch is about doing good in the world and, you know, helping entrepreneurs that are really taking on challenges in the world and and overcoming them. So if you have interest in being a part of that conversation, this is not a job, um, although one of our country managers became one of my business partners uh, as we got to know each other over the years. Um, uh, that is uh, Enrique Donje out of Querétaro, Mexico. You know, started out as a as one of our entrepreneurs, one of our customers, and then became one of our country managers for Mexico. And then, um, because of the success that we had together, became one of my business partners. I mention this because if there is opportunities as we reach out, whether it's physically or virtually, um, I want to make sure that you know that there's a place to really get integrated in to the tech ranch. So, okay, well, that's our quick open for today. I want to make sure that you get a chance to meet Christia Hoffman, as it says, creative director, brand storyteller, and consultant with expertise developing concepts and crafting messages across media channels from print to web to video. Okay, the way I would say it is, Christia, when I originally met her, uh, was this entrepreneur that was building a company called Mama Lingua. And... Uh, she, she was involved around the tech grant. She came to a bunch of our campfire activities and things like that. And um, the, the thing that happened is she then got involved uh, later on, and we've heard from her on the VO Weekly about being a Brandon expert. She's also been a poet. Um, and one of the stories that kind of informs why today's session happened is many of you don't know because I'm pretty shy about it. Every once in a while, I write poetry. And um, it's probably one of the most vulnerable things that I've ever done. And uh, I don't publish it because sometimes it's really painful. Sometimes it's really freaking angry. Sometimes it's, you know, it's loving and peaceful and, you know, visionary and things like that. Um, and I've had a hard time at times. I mean, I'm not a shy person. Put me in front of 400 people giving a speech, and I'm like, I'm in my element. But uh, get me to talk about something that I was woken up in the middle of the night, and the you know, only thing I could do is write about it. Um, write about it. Like in typically when I'm, you know, like this morning, five o'clock in the morning, not when my alarm was supposed to go off. Um, but I woke up. And the thing that happened is that voice that needs to be heard sometime, you know, starts coming out of my fingers onto the computer. Um, sometimes it comes out onto my, you know, little patent notebooks here. But um, one of the people that I've truly been moved by is, is Christia, because she will, on her Facebook, um, on her page, will share some of the poetry that 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 she has and there was one moment after we hadn't seen each other in a very long time um, that a piece of her poetry struck me so deeply that I immediately bought one of her uh, poetry books and um, actually I bought several and I handed them out <laughs> to different people but um, I used that as an excuse to share some of my own poetry um, and you know if, if there's a, only been a handful of Venture Outfitter Weeklies that I've done that and so the thing that informs today's topic, which is cultivating your inner artist, is how to um, advocate for that inner artist. In fact, the thing that Christy and I did back and forth is I said, hey, thank you very much for being so vulnerable. I get that that's partially what I need to do as well, right? You know, here I am, this, you know, successful tech entrepreneur, done business all around the world, all that sort of stuff. But sometimes this other part of me needs to be heard 
And that other part of me is what has had me take the risk to to go to places that, you know, wasn't for business reasons. It was for, you know, let's use entrepreneurship as a transformational tool. Um, Chris, Christia, without her knowing it, in fact, until I told her that on that time, is largely responsible for that. So I want to invite her on to the screen today and say, this is my way of saying thank you. And then turning <laughs> around and putting her on the spot. And, um, and the whole idea about this is uh, Christia carries her heart into everything. She did it back with her startup of Mama, Mama Lingua. She's, she does it with her poetry. She does it with her presence, if you've ever just been in her presence. And so, Christia, thank you for uh, joining us today. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of all three hats, the, the, the entrepreneur hat, the branding hat, the, and the poet hat. And I just want to um, say thank you for being here today. And um, take us, teach us about our inner artist and how to nurture, nurture that inner artist. And and why I would creates... love to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think. Thank you thank for you being for the, here. Thank you for the kind and generous introduction. You're um, welcome. Thank I, you. I, I'm I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I have a, a walk through some slides here to talk about this process. And uh, let's see, I can get. Confirmation, you can see that? Got it? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, great. So yeah, I was really um, excited when Kevin suggested this and and um, one of the things that he mentioned was this idea of um, you know, the, the inner manager um, can sort of overcome that inner artist and um, that the seeing the, the poetry work was was helpful. And you know, for me as a as a poet, um, any kind of feedback is always enormously helpful. You know, I send these things out into the ether and I I know occasionally I hear back. Um, and and that is really for me a huge part of the purpose in doing it is understanding that it's moved someone else and and uh, had some effect and and I often don't know what that is. Um, in the same way that when someone reads a poem, um, it may have a totally different interpretation um, to them. They may interpret it some way that I'm wholly unaware of, um, but and and that that poem can also shift and move, uh, create different meaning over time. Um, so I, I'm I'm glad for this moment. Uh, so. I, part of what I'd like to do here is offer insight into establishing and maintaining a creative practice that's, you know, for your own personal benefit, as well as um, your, your business. And, and I'm drawing from my own experience here. Um, uh, that's what I, I have to work with. Um, so um, I didn't start out as a poet. I started out uh, as a graphic designer. Um, so I started my creative career in design and then I concurrently pursued voice acting. And then I sort of brought those skills together in creating Mama Lingua. I realized I had these complementary skills um, and I did some writing and, uh, and started Mama Lingua, which was a, a company focused on helping parents raise bilingual kids. And, um, and through the process of that founder's journey, um, I ultimately uh, it ultimately led me to copywriting and brand development. Um, those were things I was already doing, um, but they sort of fur further solidified my work in that realm. And along the way, shortly after starting my, uh, or shortly before co-founding Mama Lingua, I started writing poetry. And, um, and along the way, I also became a screen actor. And now I focus on brand writing and uh, most recently have parlayed all of those experiences into creativity coaching. Um, all of these pieces coming together to really uh, uh, drawing on, on those experiences to help other people come to their creative practice and support their, their inner artists. Um, so with my startup, the creative practice the thing that I have found is that the creative practice that I started writing poetry um, shortly before co-founding Mama Lingua, um, my work as a poet, it provided a through line in the process of creating the company itself. And I ended up with both a visual and a, and a written record of my experience as an entrepreneur. And I'm gonna share some of that here because it speaks directly to the experience. I have, I have poetry about uh, entrepreneurship <laughs> included. Um, so the, of all of these things that I do, 
um, the most meaningful for me on a personal level um, and what has also become a professional level is writing poetry. Um, and it's, it's in part because the practice that I've established has become interwoven into my days. And um, as I mentioned, I started writing poetry shortly before, um, before co-founding Mama Lingua. Um, and it was actually shortly after my daughter was born. I started taking um, about 15 minutes a day to write poetry. And uh, it was spurred on by a professional photographer friend of mine who challenged herself to a 365 day photography series. And she decided she would post each of those photos and she was giving herself a limitation. She was using her, her iPhone um, to create those photos and, and, through, uh, and posting them on, on Facebook um, by, to give herself accountability. Um, and so I decided to follow her lead. And so was, I thought I'll take 15 minutes a day and, um, and try to write two lines, two lines of verse if I can. And, uh, and so as you can see, these are two full length collections of poetry. So I've gotten a little farther than two lines of verse per day. Um, and, and through this process, uh, I now really focus on brand writing for a living. Um, but poetry is what I what comes out when I sit down to write for myself. Um, it's not uh, essays or novels or um, uh, screenplay is, um, poetry is, is just the natural, uh, what naturally I, I'm drawn to do. Um, I've explored many other forms of art as well um, uh, and, and in the fine arts, but poetry calls me back. And, and I always say that um, writing poetry for me makes me feel most like myself when I do it. So the connection, talking about the connection between um, a creative practice and and the founder's journey. Um, so owning a startup, being an entrepreneur, um, it requires clearly requires a lot of creative thinking. Our focus is on innovation, creativity. But I think um, in my experience, I think there's a very distinct difference between creating work for others and creating work for yourself in that the, the entrepreneurial process is very much outwardly focused. So as founders, we're focused on creating a solution for an external problem. And it may feel very personal and purposeful. Um, in my case, you know, I started uh, Mama Lingua because I wanted to, I wanted to raise my own child uh, bilingual and I wanted to help other parents do that. And I thought that there was no good way to do that apart from going to live in another country. Um, but we didn't have tools at our, our fingertips. So many of us start companies because we see a need and often that need is a, is a personal one. Um, but it's even with that personal uh, connection to what we do, it's also very outwardly focused. And as founders, we're focused on creating this a solution for an external problem. Um, and, and we're constantly looking at product market fit and scalability and fundraising, competition. Um, costs, efficiencies, automation, KPIs, ROI, all the acronyms and initial <laughs> and, um, and And it's this, it's about creating a product for an audience in a very defined market. And we spend so much of our headspace in that state of analysis. Um, and uh, by contrast, I think of the creative process and a creative practice as something that you that is something that we do for ourselves it is something you can do for yourself without that uh without having to spend all that time that spending that time in, in that analytical headspace and it can provide that sense of meaning and fulfillment and help you refuel and reset um so it's and from a mental health perspective can be uh incredibly important as well and so my my role here today is is, um, is waving the flag um, and helping you advocate for your inner artist and um, sharing my own creative practice publicly. I've learned that there are a lot of um, a lot, I've met a lot of people who have hidden desires or or quiet. Uh, uh, I will 
time. And I hear a lot of people want to do things or, or they say whatever the creative practice may be. Um, and uh, I wanted to, um, my dad's actually here <laughs> um, with us and, uh, and he is a physicist turned artist. Um, and uh, so he's one of those people who I know has a, a regular creative practice. Um, and I wanted to pause here for a moment and ask about, you know, some of the, the biggest obstacles that come up for those people in the audience um, when it comes to engaging with the creative practice. Um, I know we have some folks on, on Zoom here. Um, so um, I, I'd love to hear from people if, uh, who have a creative practice or have an interest in one, if anyone here would like to share. Um, uh, Kevin, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you talked about in talking about poetry. Um, what I'm curious to know what you feel are the biggest obstacles to your practice of poetry. You know, the the um, I think my rational mind, the, the mind, you know, that went to a, you know, I have a engineering degree from UT, from University of Texas, and I graduated with honors and all that sort of stuff, and. Um, I think that the part of me that became the engineer that, you know, you know, has built all this technology was kind of trying to wrangle the world into a certain shape. And, uh, you know, it comes out of some of the stress and trauma that happened when I was a child. And I think the thing about it is the more emotional side of me, like, and there's like, you know, that I kind of discovered when I lived in Latin America, I lived in Mexico and I lived in Chile. And I, you know, like when I was working down there, um, I still remember one of my friends, a guy named Leonardo in Chile, who kind of said gringo, and he was really mad at me. I mean, I won't tell you everything he said, because it wasn't pleasant. But he, he ended up, I mean, he he was one of my enemies that became one of my closest friends. And he helped me discover my heart. So the thing for me is just, I mean, over the last, you know, 20 to 30 years has shifted is just knowing that it's okay to do like that's the hardest thing knowing that it's okay to 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 have a practice or to like to even just take five minutes like you're saying for a mental health break to just write you know i'm scared about the following thing or or sometimes it doesn't come out it come out in english and comes out in something that looks a little bit more messy in poetry so yeah it, it, for me that's that's it now it took over the last decade um in uh, the martial art practice I had, I, where I lost use of this arm for a little bit of time, it that really brought it into shape. Like, you know, like I can't do something right now. I'm not capable because I, you know, I had to have surgery on this hand to put it back together. So I don't know if that it really answers your question, but for me, it was like being brutalized by work and life over the last 30 years. His the gift in it has been to to take some time out for that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the taking time piece is, is a big one. Um, I was going to speak to that next. Um, is there anyone else you'd like to share? I'll call him my dad, <laughs> who's here. Um, dad, uh, how, how do you feel about that um, creative practice? What's, what is it that um, you are, what do you think are your, some of your biggest obstacles? Well, I, I, I think more less about obstacles than at least what occurs to me at the moment is is uh, is how I how I begin to work and and one one of the areas I work in is, is assemblage of found objects. I like things that show that they've been around for a while. They have they, you look at them and you see you realize there's a history to them, and and I. Think about putting these together to form something new that that has no reflection on on their on their origins necessarily. And my I think of that practice as as a form of play, and and really a, a return to the way I I played as a child. Literally, often I'm on the floor with with these things and just moving them around and creating some type of of composition. And sometimes I find something I like, and sometimes I don't. Uh, occasionally, I'll say, "No, this piece doesn't work," or I'll remember something else that I have somewhere, and hopefully, I can find it, and bring that into the mix, and and just allow myself to play with these things without any restrictions. 
the challenge comes later when I say, oh, okay, I've got these in, in an arrangement that I like, how can I now put them together, fasten them together into something that will either be freestanding or hang on a wall or something like that. Uh, and then that, that, be, that becomes a challenge wh whether I'm uh, lashing things together, uh, screwing things together. I, I've avoided learning to weld because I don't wanna limit myself to, okay, I've got to be able to uh, ha have metal pieces that, that could be fastened in that way. I just, okay, if I wanna attach metal to wood, I, if I can't screw it together, uh, I, I've, I've used magnets. Uh, you know, they're very strong, small magnets. Uh, so that, that also becomes a fun part and, an, and a new kind of challenge. But, uh, but mm -hmm. I think of it as beginning with, with this play of play. Just, yeah. just allow, allowing myself to play with these things. Yeah. Um, so I think um, I, a big, uh, Kevin, you mentioned time, you know, time is a big issue for a lot of people and they feel like they can't give themselves sort of permission to do the thing that they want to do, um, to your point, Dad, um, to play. Um, and uh, they, I see people regularly sacrificing their personal creative pursuits for, for business, um, which feels like the urgent and necessary thing. Um, and what I discovered in my own practice is that setting up a supportive structure um, became elemental to both my practice, my creative practice, and to my well-being. And that structure is really different than discipline. Um, having a structure feel supportive while enforcing discipline can feel punitive. If it's something that you say you have to do, I have to do this thing, um, and you're trying to make yourself, that's that's very different than um, than doing something like, in my case, setting aside those 15 minutes in the morning. Um, and it took, it can take time to uh, implement that structure. Um, but for me personally, it's no longer a nice to have um, in the in founder speak, um, but it's become a necessity. And, and I'm going to read this poem. And this is, again, part of, I have these poems that are evidence of, of this founder's journey um, of my own. Um, and of writing poetry. This is called This Early Hour. It used to feel like stealing this early hour, taken from obligation to family and house. Though now when interrupted, I feel the theft of myself, a thought of wandering before the day's concerns come to table to the desk. Even shy of rest, there's nothing I like quite as well as to be alone in the Eastern light with Wren as my alarm and reminder to tightly guard, whether stolen or by right, the time I've made mine. So rather than writing, rather than having writing poetry um, become something that I, that I had to do or have to do, um, which I often feel about other pursuits, um, and I'll go on the record saying journaling is not my thing, never has been. <laughs> um, I created a structure to support that creative practice. And for me, it's those, those early morning minutes and hours. Um, so uh, speaking about the barriers that we put up to establishing a creative practice, it's really important to, to eliminate them um, as you can to recognize them and try to, um, if, if it's of interest to, to, if part of your mission is to create some kind of, uh, engage with a creative practice, establish something, um, that you're doing on a regular basis. Um, acknowledging those barriers at the outset um, is, is important. For me, um, uh, the idea of progress is preferable to perfection. And of course, we talk about you know, rapid iteration in, in, in uh, the founder's world. Um, and uh, so this I, I included here, these, this is, these are screenshots of my Instagram feed. And um, because I was a graphic designer before, I knew that I would hold myself back from sharing my poetry if I was precious about how it looked, because um, I could spend all day trying to create something that looks really lovely. And uh, I knew if I was trying to create something pretty, I probably wouldn't share very much. And so instead of being concerned about that, and because I'd set myself this challenge to share following my friend, following my friend's lead, to share my work publicly, um, to keep myself accountable. 
um, I, I took the alternate route of trying to make anything pretty. And, uh, and I, this is what I consider the poetry equivalent of, of uh, minimum viable product. Um, and these are just screenshots of my final poems. They don't have titles. They get titles in when they go into the book form. They get final edits then. Um, but when I feel like something has come to a point where it's about right, it feels like where I wanted it to land. And I, and I usually don't sit down with anything in mind at all. And um, so talking about that process a little bit, I take my computer, I have my time, and I'm just sitting by the window, which it turns out uh, Billy Collins tells me is pretty much what every poet does. We sit by our windows and I look out and I just allow whatever to come. And that's how I begin writing in each session when I sit down. Um, and then when I come to that conclusion, uh, I, I uh, take a screenshot and I post it. Um, and uh, something else that um, uh, you spoke to, Kevin, um, this idea of, you know, do you have, uh, I think you touched on it, um, this, the, uh, essentially imposter syndrome, you know, do we have enough um, uh, 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 background knowledge information can you there's a, a permission piece for people um, maybe the idea that we're not we don't have the background in, in a particular creative pursuit um, and uh, or a sense that we don't know enough to begin that we may not be good enough but there's so much benefit in that beginner's mind um, and there's because we have the opportunity to and and in fact, Dad, you mentioned it too, this idea of, of play. Um, so you can find value in the process and in the beginner's mind, and that can be really beneficial to your practice and also to your business, bringing that back in, remembering what it is to uh, take space to start anew. You get to pursue your creative work without the weight of proving your ideas or um, creating any end product and and what you make is about what's of value to you rather than to uh, anyone else. And the process itself has value. Um, a well-known quote on the subject, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. And as founders, we get we can get so focused on um, what we know. We're deep in the weeds of, of, our, of creating our business, of wearing so many different hats. Um, and, and, and again, that's its own creative process, but often uh, we can uh, get sort of tunnel vision um, and, and, and having that creative practice provides an opportunity to start anew at something um, that we may not have any expertise in at all. And remember what it is to uh, to begin with a, a completely blank slate. So um, this is a poem called Beginner's Mind that's uh, from Everyday Courage. The scientist said expertise makes you less likely to think creatively. That is all that you've learned confines your ability to conceive of solutions beyond what you know, unless or until you cross train into discomfort. Maintain a mindset that reminds you there's more to learn, other ways to perceive, as from a beginner's mind. Think back, she said, to when you began, when foreign and new were familiar, and you were assigned mostly to listen. Over time, we find certainty through experience, but studies show we grow in confidence, build trust by taking risks. Instead of leaning on learned belief, our greatest inner innovations arise through expertise in vulnerability. So um, thinking about the benefits of a creative practice and this idea of the beginner's mind, um, allowing yourself to experience the beginner's mind can help you see things in new ways and, and try different approaches in your creative work as well as your business. So you bring this perspective, to bring this perspective back to your, your work in, in your business. And you don't have to set out to solve a, a defined problem, you can work through a focus challenge rather than some really big working at some really big solution and make make those new neurological connections. And that creative practice, I think one of the a really important aspect of it is that it provides opportunities for you to fail 
um, which is something we uh, very much try to avoid <laughs> in in our uh, as entrepreneurs. Um, we know there's iteration, but we don't necessarily want to fail. And and it is okay as you are developing, whether you're a, a fine artist or a writer or um, a clay artist or uh, an actor, whatever it is that you may be interested in pursuing on the, on the creative uh, aspect, on the creative side of things, um, that you give yourself that space and time to fail on a personal level and, and, and also experience flow. Um, when you're in that creative process, uh, uh, there was, uh, I think the speaker last week um, brought up um, the idea of flow. Uh, and, that's, and that is something often, I think as entrepreneurs, we, we are wearing so many hats, doing so many different things, that often we, uh, we may lose track of time, but losing track of time in a creative process where you're really uh, developing something, often we, we're, we're, we're met with interruptions when we're founders, when we're working on um, many different projects and aspects of projects. And remembering what flow feels like, again, is something that, that's something that you can bring back um, to your, your business and the, and, and, it's a reminder of what it feels like to be in that, that sort of zone of genius. Um, and you give your brain opportunities to work on solutions as well when you're, uh, con when you're consciously engaged uh, in, in something else other than uh, trying to find that product market fit and all the things that go along with it. Um, and to Kevin's point, uh, and he, you know, the idea that uh, he had said to me uh, can help uh, help you stay sane and connected to your soul. I think of this work as a form of self-care that also allows you to be your best self and bring your best self back to your business. So um, in more than 10 years of having a, a poetry practice myself, I've found that no matter what happens in a day, taking time to write is its own accomplishment. Um, and uh, with my startup, the creative practice provided a through line in the process of creating the company. And I ended up with a visual and written record of my experiences as an entrepreneur. And this is something that I never would have expected to do <laughs> along that, along that uh, uh, journey, the founder's journey. This is me at a book release party um, and uh, sign, signing books. And this became part of my journey as a, as a founder. Um, and having this this visual and written record of my experience as an entrepreneur um, in these these poems that speak to the process. And my work in my in my startup is done. It's behind me now. But my poems remind me about what I experienced and and provide a nodal point of connection um, with other people, as evidenced here. And um, surprisingly, writing poetry has, has evolved to be a, become a part of the work that I that I do on a regular basis. And I get to share the experience of that practice and the work itself. And for me, it's that, that feeling of um, doing uh, poetry, making me feel most like myself and like what I meant to, to do in the world. Um, I wanted to, to finish up with one poem um, that is called Entrepreneur. And this is from my second book of poetry. Um, and I, I hope it resonates with uh, some of you listening today and watching. Um, Entrepreneur. Days newly spent consumed by acronyms, puzzling out the applied meaning behind accepted initialisms and making up our own for fun and the practice of standing at the helm. We write the scene, midday, two women in a living room, face to face, vision to vision, working through the permutations of models and innovation, trying to guess at what we don't know and can't possibly predict in the face of IoT, the singularity, the UI, UI, UX, how to differentiate, make space for our new sons, Pam, Sam, Psalm. Who knew we'd be mothers again? Flipping through the pages of our handbook to see if our little one is meeting the milestones for growth. This time, screen time, a predictor of health, and play dates with mentors, investors, advisors who might intersect, click with them solution, say I do to traction, team call to action. I'm learning perhaps art and business aren't mutually exclusive, here with proof, an MRR but one axis of success when the quest requires creation as evidence and yields a network of new thought. 
I'll stop my screen share there and uh, open open this up for conversation. Absolutely beautiful. Um, absolutely beautiful. The thing that there's a couple of different things that uh, before we uh, just generally take questions and stuff like that, I want to make sure I point out um, the uh, this concept of cross training into discomfort, you know, dot, dot, dot into a beginner's mind. I love that. There's the, that is the startup journey, right? And uh, right, right. it's the individuals that that failed to do that. Like one of them went to jail yesterday, right? Um, you know, the 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 person um actually I I, I had her name in mind that uh for the Thanos scandal, right? Yes. You know, it's like yeah. you know, when you hit a wall, you actually need to say, hey, I hit a wall versus like hiding it and then having it turn into something terrible, right? That's that's the worst part about the entrepreneurial journey is like making, you know, values uh value judgments and and now that's a particularly bad example, but, you know, cross tain into discomfort, you know, what that person's life would have been like if, if she had just said, Hey, you know, what my life would have been like if I had just admitted, okay, I just failed. And if I could just, you know, do so openly, it might be a little bit easier. Um, I also love how you actually, uh, you, you somehow as a mom and a businesswoman, you figured out how to create that structure for you know to replace the discipline I, I really want to actually let's just stop for a second and say tell us more about that because it's that just because you had a structure versus discipline I don't get it it just seems like that's <laughs> still so hard yeah I think um it it's I as a mom as a new mom I quite literally would be uh it's maybe maybe a little graphic but um I would be you know, I had to pump for my daughter uh, to have milk and I would I would be doing that while writing um, because I there's not a lot you can do <laughs> um, but uh, the uh, um, that that was that was one of the ways that 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 began um, but the uh, it became I think it was it partly it was because of the accountability piece um, which was, you know, I, I had that component, which said, I, you know, I made that, I made it public um, that I would write two lines of, post two lines of verse a day. And so I had to, in order to be in integrity with myself, had to uh, maintain that accountability, um, even though no one, um, you know, I'm sure no one else cared if I had those two lines of poetry uh, posted on Facebook, but I did because I, uh, uh, to me, that was my Facebook served as my accountability partner. And, um, and to some extent, it was also, it was fun. It was, there was a fun component to that. Um, there was a play aspect. Um, and, and, uh, and I, and so I had that, I had set out that very readily accomplishable, um, uh, task for myself, that goal. Um, and, and then as I continued that practice, and because it was so small, because it was so incremental of, you know, 15 minutes I, I, and two or two lines of verse, um, it's, that's, that's so little. And I knew that I could do that. If I couldn't do that much, then <laughs> there, was, then there was a real issue. Um, and, uh, and, and as I continued to do it and realized, um, you know, and, and these two lines became complete poems, I found that that it did something for me on a um, mentally it provide provided clarity um, it made me feel connected to myself it made me feel more grounded um, and more thoughtful um, when i left that process i felt that i could move into my day with more thoughtfulness and um, consciousness conscientiousness and uh, and more generosity toward others because i'd given myself that time um, and uh, I think that 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 was a that's that's a speaking to that piece about you know not only self care and mental health but also bringing your best self back into your your business or your work or your family. Um, that that little bit of time I saw what effect that had um, that was significant and um, and over time it became a necessity because I discovered the difference what it was if I didn't give myself that. And, and so I made that, worked that structure into my day. And it meant um, just like I used to do with, uh, at, when I used a gym outside of my home, 
I I would had to just start getting up earlier. That's all. That's what it was. I decided it was that question of how can I, and figuring out how I how I could. That's interesting because uh, yeah, I, I, a lot of times I'm kind of mopey because I'm like I don't want to be up so early. But uh, just recently, just recently when I get the like I woke up at five sixteen a couple of days ago and I was. And it was one of the first times that everyone actually was happy about waking up at the time or not happy initially. I was like, oh, wait, I should be upset because. But yeah, the, there's something interesting about that. Let me ask you a different question. Um, so one of the things that I'm reflecting on that you and I both had the benefit of um, is because we've worked kind of cross borders, we've gotten to exercise different parts of our personality. Like I know that I'm inherently impacted in ways that I'm conscious and unconscious of because of that first work that I did when I, I, I started my first business and, and, you know, my first client was Mexico. And, and then when I started tech grant or the business that became tech ranch uh, in Chile in 2003, like, you know, I was, I got to experience a different side of myself because I was in a different culture. How does that actually help us in this process of, um, because I know that you have you have like an awareness and a similar uh, not same background, but there's some similarities. How how can it, since we have so many people in the wider audience that will hear this, that mm -hmm. are coming from uncultured, you know, they're doing U.S. market entry or they're going someplace else across a uh, across a border. How does that affect us? How can that be a useful tool for this? Um, well, I, I think the uh, I mean certainly the when I think about creative practice, there's a, um, I think that that's a, it's something that's universal, um, you know, that the inclination, the need to, to create. Um, but I think I really, I think about connection, um, uh, and the, um, you know, how for me, it's about language, um, and, and the opportunity to connect through, through language, uh, and finding that, you know, people are, are, while I write in English, um, people are, you know, if, if uh, short of translation, if people are, are reading the work, um, there's that opportunity to, the, the meaning can be transmitted um, and there's that opportunity for connection and, and understanding that is separate from, from business um, and, and, and creating those um, networks of connection that is recognizing sort of the human element um, that we're we're yes we may be focused on on business um, but but this is also something that connects us in a bigger way our experience of of the world um, our experience of one another or of the entrepreneurial process in in my in, in this case um, that's uh, we we can all sort of nod and 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 know that yes this is, this is something that's shared um, that's that's one of the first things that occurs to me about this kind of work uh, in particular. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, like uh, having hearing the heart beat in different languages and then having that experience. I, I definitely I, I hear that in the work that you've done and in the how you've worked with uh, entrepreneurs around the tech ranch that especially the sensitivity about the different languages and, and the poetry itself and how that that reflects. I'm wondering if um, uh, we have just a little bit more longer, but if we have a question or two. Um, if you want to speak live right, and you're in the Zoom audience, raise your digital hand. And then to our streaming audiences, I'm doing my best on my little screen here to manage the conversations and questions that y'all are asking. So if there's anyone that'd like to post out in the, on the streams, please let me know. Because uh, Christy, uh, Christy is definitely a uh, very special resource for those of us entrepreneurs that grew up in the ranks of the engineers that <laughs> need some support for uh, allowing this other side to show up. Anyone have anything they want to ask? Well, let me do this. I, I know that uh, I, I could personally ask you like the next 20 questions um, myself, just because it's been, it's been helpful to see your, your poetry and how you, uh, shine so vulnerably and sharing on Facebook. Any other thoughts you'd like to share, Christia, before we close it up for the day? Um I think uh the I I, I think the for me the the important piece in coming here was really um was what you had 
your your initial uh, thought about this idea of advocating for your inner artists that um, I think it's such an important uh, concept that you know so many of us have those things inside of us and again it's you know it's in in my experience of sharing these things publicly learning that that other people have these things that they want to do um, or that they do quietly or maybe here and there but that they don't give a lot of um, credibility or, or time for um, they may not they may not put as much value on it because the other things seem so urgent and necessary. Um, I think uh, I my hope is to encourage um, and inspire people to to give that time, give that that time because in some ways it's it's really one of the most important things you can you can do for yourself because of what it allows you to bring back to your to your work that you do um, day in and day out, as well as you know what happens after that. Um, and this will not always be the focus of your of your life, what you're doing now, um, and your creative practice has the potential to carry through and and also serve as a, a as a reminder and record of of what you've done through the course of your life. Exactly. Well, it's interesting. I, you, you're encouraging me to um, to definitely do much more of that myself. Um, from a standpoint of, I, I know that it's been one of the more helpful things. You know, not just having a journaling practice, but actually having something that's like um, a, like you're saying, the the poetry practice versus the journaling practice. They 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 provoke different parts of the brain. So. Um, well, let's do this. I, I actually, before before we close, I, I know you brought uh, David, your father, uh, with us. David, any any words that you'd like to say? Uh, your your daughter has had a profound impact on many people in Tech Ranch, including myself. So I'm just wondering if there's anything you'd like to say before we close it all up for the day. Oh, I don't. I, am I still on? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. You you are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, it's a pleasure being here, and I, I appreciated uh, your, your hosting this. Um, I, I've had this thought most of my life that that and starting as a physicist for you know as my primary career, uh, that creativity was a fundamental human uh, need and 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 drive, and 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 most people. Uh, show that in 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 ways that they may not think of as as being creative uh, but but uh, from from the from the dictator on down uh, you you can you can you can create an explanation where that individual is being creative manipulating the world uh, around around him for for a particular purpose so so uh, the the fear of 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 individuals saying oh i'm not really creative i th i think is is uh, uh is unfortunate that, that that exists and and encouraging people to realize that creativity has has many forms and 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 within even within an individual uh the the creative opportunity is is there in 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 different realms well, it's exciting. It's it's a it's a hopeful statement about uh, physicists and engineers like me, and <laughs> and he did that that you know, especially as we're trying to flex into um, the 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 structures needed of for around entrepreneurship, but to both be flexible in as well as to create structures. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Christia, yeah, go ahead, David. Uh, one other thing that occurred to me when when. Um... People occasionally ask me what, about the difference between do, doing physics and doing art, and, and uh, one of the things that occurred to me is that well, in in physics, you're 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 doing all these things, experiments and so on, and designing things in order to find out what what are the laws and what are the rules that that determine how the universe acts, and in, and in art, there are no rules, and if you find one, you figure out how can I break this rule. And and that's that's a fun thing to think about doing in in the creative side of things. And don't worry about you know don't worry about what the rules might be. You know what what can I what can I do 
Um, it's also that's a that's also a perfect call to arms for entrepreneurs, right? A lot of times we have to be ready to say, okay, well, the common knowledge is this, and we're going this other direction, and that's I think how a lot of different uh, markets have been disrupted because it's like, right? It's like we we actually the common knowledge is wrong, <laughs> so perfect. Well, Christy, uh, any any closing words from you that you'd like to share? I th I'm grateful for the for the time today, Kevin. Thank you for inviting me to to talk on this process. Yeah, well, I appreciate everything you've done. You definitely um, you're definitely a leader among our community, leading me, including in, in that in um, in helping just to allow, especially in some of the roughest moments of you know. Here I have been an entrepreneur, and instead of just stopping at one or two companies, like continuing the process, this is my art, but the other side of it too is creating that, that special place for the voice to be there because, you know, sometimes the dominant voice of, you know, prefrontal cortex says, wants, you know, we must take care of ourselves by doing the following engineering thing. Ah, oh, that doesn't always work. So, um, I greatly appreciate your your time today. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and bring things to a close. Uh, we thank uh, thank you, David. Thank you, Christia, for for joining us today. And um, just as a reminder for everyone that if you have questions after this, one of the things that we'll do is we'll ask Christia to be available in the in the community site. Um, we ask our speakers to be available for you know just a few days after the uh, on the community site to instead of trying to send them emails and bug them directly, post it into the community site attached to the area that that person is attached. There will be, today's program will be listed there with the video that that we've taken. And um, we'll ask Christia to, to just respond to your questions if you have questions back and forth. And that way the community can uh, be enriched by the insight that both she shared and the questions that you might bring to uh, future parts of this. So thank you, Christia. Um, well, cool. Well, what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and finish things up for today. Uh, the main thing to, to do is if you are not yet part of the community or you would like to uh, take advantage of the mentorship opportunity that I mentioned earlier, uh, go to techranch.com slash connect. And on there, there's a number of different places that you can plug into. Make sure you're on the newsletter. Make sure that if you're involved in a different country and you want to bring, or a different part of the United States even, you want to bring a connection into the work that we're doing, um, please do. I think, you know, it's like, like Christia started and I then was trying to say that there's something that by our community working across border, we're getting to exercise some of this sort of stuff. Some cultures just totally understand that creativity is part of, of what they do. And, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like how, what I discovered in myself about Mexico. Part of what we want to do is continue to build those kind of bridges back and forth. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have a lot of work to do on building our businesses and building the products, you know, engineering wise, but let's make sure we do this um, through this other way. Um, and one of the ways you can do that at, at no cost is to start building the connections to the community. So go to techranch.com slash connect. And with that, uh, we'll go ahead and take things to a close today. You know, um, there will be a number of great activities coming up soon. We're about to announce the next six weeks of programming. Make sure that you take advantage of it. Next week will be about conflict management and how to overcome conflicts as you're building your businesses. Uh, it's always an honor to be a part of a, a community of entrepreneurs that are driven by vision and values. Let's go change the world for the better together. Y'all take care. Take care for the rest of the day and we'll see you next week.